Stephen Casey, the Eagle, where we're serving America's best. DJ Crystal Clear here with you on this Thursday afternoon, January 21st. It's 3.07, and it's time for the latest edition of What's the Word, the radio broadcast that brings you news of our Area 1 community. I'm Army Staff Sergeant Crystal Crawford, and now here's the host of What's the Word, Mr. Frank Fisher of the USAG Red Cloud and Area 1 Public Affairs Office. Thank you, Sergeant Crawford. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of What's the Word. We are now in the first month of the new year, of course. 2016, and that means we're in the first month of a presidential election year. In little more than 10 months from now, Americans get to cast their vote for president. Election Day 2016 is November 8th. So, we're devoting today's edition of What's the Word to making sure you know how to register. And we'll tell you where in Area 1 you'll find help getting registered. That way, you too can cast your vote, you too can be counted. Helping us bring you the word on that will be today's guest. He is Mr. Dong Park, the Area 1 Installation Voting Assistance Officer. Mr. Park is with the U.S. Army Garrison Red Cloud and Area 1's Directorate of Human Resources. But first, you know, it's interesting to note that America is known throughout the world as a country where we have personal freedom and where no king or dictator rules the people. The people themselves choose their leaders by casting their vote. Or, as President Lincoln put it in his famous speech at the Gettysburg Battlefield, our American government is government of the people, by the people, for the people. But we also know that there are or have been many countries where dictatorship has been the reality, the bleak, stifling way of life for millions of men, women, and children. Having been a soldier during the Cold War, I think especially of the former Soviet bloc, whose people did not have our freedoms. No free speech, can't speak out and say what you really think or feel if it's not what the ruling dictatorship wants. No freedom of assembly, no freedom of travel. They'd even dictate what music you could and couldn't listen to. As to the right to vote, though Soviet bloc countries would have elections, yes, but the whole thing was a sham. In reality, the elections they held were anything but free and fair. Just a lot of window dressing, just for show. Because the communist authorities themselves would decide who to put in which offices. Then they'd give out ballots on election day to the voters with the names of those candidates. For every office, they'd provide only one candidate. Phony from the word go. That and, of course, the infamous system of government terror the jails, the hard labor camps in Siberia, the secret police surveillance and interrogation. These were just some of the ways the communist rulers kept a monopoly on power. Well, the contrast between dictatorship and our American democracy is obvious. No dictatorship chooses who will lead our country. We, the people, do that. It's a precious right of citizenship. We make the choice. It's also one of citizenship's I should say, one of citizenship's vitally important responsibilities. So let's get right to it. Mr. Park, first off, just who is eligible to vote? Good afternoon. Uh, all U.S. citizens, whether you're overseas or back in states, are eligible to vote. Uh-huh. And what's the benefit to getting registered as soon as possible? I know you often say that's very important. Especially if you're overseas, like in Korea, it's very advantage for you to register early on time because if you register late or, t or towards election, close to election, your registrar's form may not get to your election office on time. So th it's very important that you send your registration form way before so that it makes it to your valid election office, your county election office in your state, and you receive your ballot on time. And uh, we'll have, of course, much more on this subject in, in the, as the hour progresses. By the way, uh, you pointed out to me not long ago, you reminded me that when service members, when members of our military community cast their vote for president, <laughs> they're also casting their vote for the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Correct. All right. Well, uh, we'll hear more in just a little while. Coming up after the break, Mr. Park will walk us by the numbers through the very easy but important process of registering to vote. But first, here's Sergeant Crawford. And getting you back into the music, it's Sean Paul featuring Keisha Cole with Give It Up To You on Give It Up To Me on AFN. We're back with What's The Word Hour, and here's Mr. Frank Fisher. Thank you, Sergeant Crawford. Hello again. And today on What's The Word, we're talking about how to register to vote if you're here in Area 1. 
We're talking about this with Mr. Dong Park, the Area 1 Installation Voting Assistance Officer. Mr. Park, I know from our earlier conversations that members of our overseas military communities have two main steps they have to take to be able to vote. They have to register to vote, and later they send in an absentee ballot. So let's take them in that order, please. Taking it by the numbers, so to speak, walk us through what a community member has to do to get registered. So there are a few options that they can take uh, to register to vote. Um, one option is they can go online and go to the Federal, Assist- Federal Voting Assistance Program website, which is FA- fvap.gov. If you go in there, there's an option to, to go to vote voter section where you can actually look at the information on your state and actually find the form, registration form, to fill out and mail it in. And it does not require a stamp. It's already pre-stamped, so you can just print it out and send it to your valid state, uh, valid county election office. And they have the address and list of which state, county office, all in that website. Other method is contact your unit voting assistant officer or come and visit me at uh, Installation Voting Assistant Office in Mod Hall, room 117. I'm available. I actually have a hard copy form for you to fill out. I can mail it in there for you after you seal it, or you can mail it yourself. You can pick up the form from me. The biggest thing is once you have the form, whether it's online version or uh, actual hard copy, you need to know which state you're eligible. Sometimes some members get confused that just because they lived in a certain state, they think that they belong to that state and they're eligible to vote for that state. Some state, not all state, each state has a different requirement. Some states require you to have a valid driver's license in their state. Not all, but some states. So you need to look into which state you claim your residency at and vote for the right state. And uh, let's, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that website, which sounds, I I remember seeing it myself. Uh, You told me about it. I went and looked at it. And uh, I found it to be very comprehensive. There was a lot of information, and it was easy to access. It was not, in my experience with it, one of those uh, not user-friendly websites that that put you, send you on a wild goose chase and down ten different dead-end streets before you figure out that you're lost. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but uh, let's take a look at this a little more about the absentee ballot. Uh, Tell people again, how do they arrange to get that absentee ballot? Who sends it to them? And what do they do once they have it? So once you send in your registration form and they validate your at the correct state and your residency, they send you, as you get close to your... Uh, as, as we get close to presidential election in November, you will receive through your... If you're overseas in Korea, your APO mail, mail address, uh, mailbox, your ballot, absentee ballot from your county election office. That, that's, and once you receive that, you fill it out. You fill out the candidate option that you have. You sign it and you seal it just like you did with your registration and send it back to your, your state. So the first thing we need to remember if, we wanna, if we're here in Area 1 and we want to vote is, number one, we have to register. Correct. And number two, once we are registered, we need to be ready to uh, receive an absentee ballot, fill it out, and send it back? Correct. Okay. Those are the two key steps? Those are the two key steps, and you have, some, depending on your state, some states have option to email, scan and email your absentee ballot. Right. So some people might actually take the piece of paper and have to put it in the mail, in the regular mail. Correct. But some states will give them an option of uh, email. Yes, they will provide you the email uh, address as well. Okay. And uh, if people are confused as to what the rules are in their state, if I'm remembering correctly, one of the great virtues of this website that you're telling us about is that one can get on that website, find your state, and all of the rules, all of the requirements that apply to your state will be spelled out right there. Correct. That's a really good thing. Well, here's Sergeant Crawford with the break. And I'll be right back with your weather exchange rate and gas prices.
And we're back with What's the Word Hour, and here's Frank Fisher. Thank you, Sergeant Crawford. We're talking today about how to register to vote. Our guest is the Area 1 Installation Voting Assistance Officer, Mr. Dong Park. And uh, this is our the third of four segments that are part of each uh, Thursday's What's the Word broadcast. And what we want to do before we go on to other aspects of the uh, story of how you get to vote is just highlight the two main steps, two very simple steps. We can maybe simplify it even more and say that we can divide them into four simple things that happen. Let me remind you of what they are before we talk about other aspects of this. If you want to register to vote, if you want to vote, the first thing you have to do is fill out the registration form. And the second and final thing, really, is once you've turned in that registration form to the appropriate place in your state, the state where you're registering to vote, you will receive an absentee ballot. And then the last that's the last step. You take that absentee ballot, you fill it out, and you send it back to where it's supposed to go. Now, how do you know what the rules are in your state? How do you know, uh, how do you get the form? How do you know whether you can send things in by email versus send them by regular mail? How do you know all of that? That's where Mr. Park comes in to help you. That's why he's here, to help you, the soldiers, the airmen, the civilians, the family members of Area 1 to, to get registered to vote. Here's how it works. If you need the information, if you're not sure about the details, there are three things you can do. One, you see Mr. Park. Another is that the government maintains a voter website called fvap.gov and it's designed to make it easy for you. You just go on that website, you find your state, and you'll, you'll find all of the information spelled out. And you know, if you do that and you find that, well, I don't, I'm not really sure of what this sentence is saying or what this paragraph means or I feel a little confused, then Mr. Park is very ready to help you. He's very ready to have you contact him and help you out. And uh, another thing you can do is you can see your unit voter representative. Uh, so there are three ways you can get the information. Through that government website, fvap.gov, through your unit voter rep, or through Mr. Park. And uh, that's all you have to do. And then you can register to vote. Well, one of the things that uh, we want to remind you about is uh, a problem that can sometimes happen where people assume that because they voted in a previous election <laughs> that they're still good to go and that all they have to do is, well, that they're, they're, they're good to go. But that may not be the case. Mr. Park will tell you about that. So a lot of people assume that uh, because they registered last year or a couple years ago or previous election, they assume that I'm already registered, I don't need to register again, and they assume that they're going to receive the ballot to a valid address uh, again. So a lot of states require you to register every year or every two years, and you may not receive your ballot just because you registered last time. So you may want to double check whether you are still eligible to vote and you are going to receive your ballot uh, to, from your state. If you have doubt, always, always register again and there's no harm or foul in re-registering to your state. So I recommend you double check and, and it takes less than five minutes to fill out the form and send it in. If you, if you don't have time to send it in, come and visit me and fill it out. Five, less than five minutes, give it to me, seal a sealed envelope, and I can send it in for you. And that's very good advice. And so if somebody wants to, as you say, double check, if they want to take your good advice and double check, hmm, I, I was able to vote last time, but do I need to re-register? Uh, they can find that out one way is by coming to you and you'll help them find the answer. But if they, they have a couple of other ways, right? Correct. They can go online and uh, check or follow the procedures. They, have, they even have an email address to each county voting offices that you can email them and ask, hey, do I need to re-register? And they will respond to you in a timely manner. And you know, Mr. Park, that's a really good example of why I agree with you when you told me some time back 
that this is a very thorough website, this fvap.gov website, uh, because there it is. What a perfect example. You can actually find the email. You can get connected to the uh, get away to send an email to your county voting office Correct. just by going to that website, finding your state, and then navigating that website. Correct. That's a really good thing. Well, here's Sergeant Crawford with the break. And we're back with What's the Word Hour, and here's Frank Fisher. Thanks, Sergeant Crawford. Hello again. If you're just joining us, this is the final segment of our hour. We've been talking about how to register to vote here in Area 1, and we've been doing that with Mr. Dong Park, the Area 1 Installation Voting Assistance Officer. And I'm going to give him an opportunity now to recap some important points that will help you get registered to vote. So I just want to tell everybody that, voters out there, that there are a lot of countries, just like Mr. Fisher mentioned at the beginning, that it, you are exercising your American citizens', citizens right to vote. And it's your right to vote. You don't have to vote, but it's your right to vote, and you're exercising that right. A lot of countries don't have that freedom to vote. And fortunately, we, in, in a country like the United States, we are able to exercise our right by voting. That's one of the, our right uh, to vote. And what I want to emphasize, as I uh, re-emphasize again, is to make sure you register early on time and make sure just because you register before that doesn't mean you don't have to register again depending on your state you may have to register again also you're in overseas area so your ballot may go to a wrong address so just make sure the best way is re-register again it takes less than five minutes once you get to the right uh, people or right website to get the information register and vote uh, let me remind you the website is fvap.gov uh, the, the Federal Voting System Program website. It's very in informational. It has all the information, including your state and county election office information, email address, and actual forms to register. Also, if you have any question, just dial DSN number 732-7189. That's 732 732- 7189, that's the number to my office, and I can answer all anything, any voting related question. And uh, I want to just uh, again tell our listeners from my personal experience using that or visiting that website that it really is what you are saying it is. It's very specific, very concrete, very thorough, and it's very clear. You can really easily find. The states. You, you, you know your home state. You go to you click on it, and everything you need to know is there. And it is so thorough, as we were saying in an earlier segment this afternoon, so thorough that you can even find an email to, if you need to, to email your particular voting office in your particular county, in your particular state. It's there on that government website. Correct. Well, uh, I uh, was, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, I was a soldier during the Cold War. I enlisted when I was 17. I was a very young guy, and uh, in, in, at no time in my four years of active duty service did anybody talk to me about voting or tell me how to do it or where to go, and I didn't know. I had never done it. And uh, so our soldiers and airmen and members of our Area 1 community are really fortunate that this information is available and that a formal effort is made to uh, get that information to members of our community. So uh, whether you're a soldier, an airman, a civilian, whether you're a family member, as we've been saying, we Americans are not living in a dictatorship. We are living in a democracy. We have freedom to choose our own leaders. We get to choose this year who's going to be the next president. It's your right. It's your freedom. It's a precious freedom that people in some countries don't have. And uh, so make the most of it. And uh, Mr. Park is, uh, as the in Area 1 Installation Voting Assistance Officer, 
That's why he's here. He's here to help you and me to get registered to vote so that we can exercise that critical responsibility of American citizenship. Well, uh, my thanks to Mr. Park. Uh, again, he is the Area 1 Installation Voting Assistance Officer. He's with the U.S. Army Garrison Red Cloud and Area 1's Directorate of Human Resources. What's the Word airs every other Thursday at 3 p.m. here on AFN Casey. I'm Frank Fisher of the Area 1 Public Affairs Office. I've been your host for What's the Word, and I hand back now to my What's the Word broadcast partner, AFN Casey DJ, Army Staff Sergeant Crystal Crawford. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Here's Sergeant Crawford. And as Mr. Fisher said, thanks for joining us this, for this edition of What's the Word, and I'll be right back with your weather exchange rate and gas prices.